<clears throat> so I wanted to make a follow-up video um, again to my uh, announcement yesterday. First, I want to really thank everyone. Um, I, I can't say enough how much it's meant to me um, from the number of people that have reached out and commented on the post. Uh, to me, that's the good side of social media. I really don't stay too active before this, but um, I did find this helpful and, and got the word out to a lot of people all at once. <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, I'm really in very high spirits. Um, also scared. Right now, uh, you know, my chemo first session of 12 starts tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be three hours long. And... Uh, Man, I got a lot to go over. I don't know how long I'll be able to, to actually talk. So, I, I did want to give part of the status, and like I said, it's, I'll talk as long as I can. Uh, I am actually, I do get uh, a little bit fatigued. Uh, uh, and then part of the cancer is that um, it does become difficult to talk for extended periods. Uh, I would, I know, number one question is people are going to be like, well, how did you find out? And, uh, uh I wanted to say some other things tonight before I get to that, so I'll probably be a follow-up video. Um, <clears throat> I am doing much better, actually, and I'll, I'll go into this in detail, but when it first came out, um, you know, this all started probably uh, early January. <laughs> 2024 so far has been a terrible year for me. <laughs> I started by cracking a tooth, and that was awful, uh, the New Year's weekend. Um, then we had the freeze, that's actually when I started feeling some chest pain. Uh, and then that led me to get uh, an x-ray. And <clears throat> that's when I started to find out. So, I uh, really wanted to give a status today. Um, again, those first couple of weeks, like, I could feel it in my chest. I thought it was heart stuff, obviously, as a heavy set ex-smoker. Um, <clears throat> uh, um you know, when it turned out it wasn't, um, I immediately started a fast, completed actually, uh, I don't remember the exact, I know the date I started was February 5th, and that's as soon as I heard anything. Um, but those first two weeks, like, I couldn't, I could barely walk. Um, I ended up going to the emergency room once. Like I said, I'll, I'll go into that more in detail in a, a future video just to give everyone um, that. But again, what I have is Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, which is a fast-growing, aggressive form of cancer. But thankfully, they actually have a very good uh, cure rate. Um, I'll probably go into a lot more detail because I'm learning as I'm going. Um, you know, I really was kind of prepped for this. Um, uh, almost, let's see, I guess it was a year and a half or more ago, I discovered uh, Jason Fung. That's why I was able to do a, a 30-day fast. You can't start. I did a number of long-term fasts over the last year in 2023. I think I it was 2022 when I first discovered it. Uh, fasting, that is. And uh, I did a number of fasts last year for weight loss, um, but I enjoyed his book, the Obesity Code, so much that I also listened to the Cancer Code and the Diabetes Code. You know, it was all, hey, fasting solves a lot of these problems. And then a lot of the YouTube health guys I listened to uh, Hooverman, Dr. Berg, uh, Thomas Delore, uh, Mind Pump, um, they all, I think, have said, expressed, like, hey, if I ever got cancer, I would fast. So that's what led me on that journey. And, you know, really, I went from being pretty obese to now I would classify myself as overweight. Like, I probably have another 15, 20 pounds to lose at uh, you know, 244 <clears throat> and six foot. Okay, so I have Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, it was a little confusing. So one, like I said, is when my doctor told me, because I had four potential cancers, uh, it all started with a tumor right here on my left. Um, it's a anterior mediastinal. Might have pronounced that wrong. All of these medical terms are terrible as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's, you know wrapped around one of my arteries going into the heart. Um, the PET scan showed that I also have something, and that's what leads to the difficulty talking on my thyroid. Um, I found out just today, because I had the 
um, when they put the port in. So that's have to do the chemo. They put this port. It's actually under your skin. It's some plastic metal thing that they can inject the poison into. Um, and yes, I see chemo as poison. I think the whole part of it is, but because this is such an aggressive cancer, and like I said, I'll probably talk more about that, but I did want to get some stuff out today. Um, so yeah, thyroid cancer is a papillon thyroid cancer. They said it's actually really secondary. That's That I've probably had for years. No idea. No idea. And it's only recently <clears throat> that as I talk more, maybe you can hear it. I don't know how good my audio is. It's getting a little difficult to talk. Um, and those of you who know me know I love to talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, again, uh, statistics on Hodgkin's lymphoma um, is a 90% cure rate. That's kind of a bullshit statistic as far as I'm concerned as a statistician I'd really like to see a lot more about the data um, it really comes out of 9,000 people Amer Americans a year get it and 900 die of it therefore 90% that's not that doesn't make a lot of sense as a, as a to even quote the statistic but uh, again I want to stay positive and and part of the reason is again um, I have no idea you know how many people did alternative therapies how many people did chemo what age people were when they got it. And the interesting thing about Hodgkin's lymphoma is it's really a young person's cancer, um, but it's bimodal. So what that means is that if you look at the age of people who get Hodgkin, who get diagnosed with it, and again, because it's a fast-growing uh, cancer, this is not one that develops over years. So... Um, I'll go into that in more detail. I suspect this started for me sometime between May and September, um, and I can go into the details of that, but I, I'm, I don't have the energy to do that tonight. Um, but usually it's people you know, in their 20s, 20 to 30, or people in their 80s. Um, so again, even that five-year um, death rate, because that's one of the other statistics they put, it's really skewed which to me is good news at 50. I'm about to be 50 years old um, because someone's 85 and they get it. Their five-year prognosis isn't good to begin with, right? The average age is 79 or 80 in the United States. Uh, but the stuff I wanted to say. So um, actually never had anything really serious uh, medical-wise my whole life, um, you know, like I said, I've been obese for a good long time now. I've been working on it. I was working on myself a lot. I started CrossFit uh, five, six years ago, um, which I did enjoy, <laughs> or I enjoyed it when the workouts were over. Or I said I attempted CrossFit was my joke because right, I did struggle, and everyone in everyone in the damn class is you know twenty and thirty years old. So um, I was happy to like not pass out in the middle of those workouts. I did get my, man, I was doing so well too. I did get my bench press back up to 300. I'll do a shout out and I'll do a lot more details on that. Man, take creatine. Uh, all the recent research, all those health YouTubers too, you can you can look it up. Like um, everyone should be just taking creatine. It's It used to be a thing as like, oh, you only need it if you're working out. You need to take it with grape juice, all this BS. You do need to take it with a lot of water and electrolytes, but kind of rambling at this point so i've actually been pretty impressed with the healthcare system uh, i did get at least for the traditional cause um, standard of care is what they call it i have i am looking into alternative therapies like i said um we just reached out to a place in atlanta um where they do a combination of what's called dr S thomas siegfried is a phd not a medical doctor who put out this book called the medical the Sorry, the metabolic theory of cancer is very interesting. Um, I've been trying to follow the protocol. I'm a, I've actually also reached out to the Hippocrates Research Foundation in Texas. It's a nonprofit. They are amazing. I would look them up. I'll probably be posting a lot about them because I reached out to them and they got back to me instantly. And I've a, already been in contact through email. Uh, I mean, one of their founders, um, I mean, called me on a Sunday afternoon after he had my number and spent 30, 40 minutes, which I'm 
immensely grateful. And again, they're doing this nonprofit. They didn't ask for any money. Um, so big fan. I'll be more organized. Again, uh, video's already longer than I thought I could make tonight. All right. So Reddy asked, what's the cause? Doctors got nothing. Nothing for thyroid cancer, nothing for Hodgkin's lymphoma, except it's not tobacco related and it's not my cell phone. Um, I'll go into more what I think could potentially have caused it, but um, I, there, that's a big question. The metabolic theory has its theories. It really deals with, uh, you know, mutations or cells in the mitochondria. I don't exactly understand it, and it just really seems like it's kind of thing of, hey, this happens. And that's one thing I'll say is, like, literally, the, you know, February 1st, six weeks ago about like i had no no idea um and this is exactly the kind of thing you're stage four cancer so uh i guess i did want to say some more but i'll, I'll wrap it up for now um you know my the support i've gotten is great um for those of you who don't know i work at nasa it's been an honor and a privilege i'm really so depressed because my job was going so well i was working on uh, the human lander system uh, I'm a, the reliability lead, like actually, uh, career has really been gangbusters for the last four or five years. I've been really, um, finding my own. Um, so I have to step back, but they've also supported me. So it really is such a wonderful place to work and uh, the work we're doing and, and to be a part of this, um, arguably, you know, the landing on the moon was, was, uh, humanity's greatest, I would say. <laughs> it was biased at this point. And getting to work uh, with both SpaceX and Blue Origin uh, really has been wonderful. Um, I, I'll really, I'll, I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe I can say a few more things. I, I will say my prognosis is good, again, um, you know, and if I had more time to do more, I'm trying to figure it out on my phone, uh, the, you know, all, everything is directed towards traditional chemo care. Um, I guess I would, that would be the last thing I'll say for now. Like the chemo, it's the doctors. So they've both been very good and confident, but they're also very set in their ways. Um, you know, I don't like answers to those questions of, yeah, we have no idea what causes it. Um, yeah, this is your only option. Do the chemo and hey, you're going to lose your hair. And, uh, you know, today they went through all the lists of side effects, bone pain, nausea. Uh, apparently the, they have other medicines. They have all these disgusting medicines they want me to take, which all are probably side effects. Um, I'm learning as I go. Um, I'm really trying to get together. Um, I, I can't even express really the gratitude I have for everybody that's reached out and offers of help. And, and all, people called, I, I talked to a friend I hadn't talked to in 15 years. Um, I apologize that I can't spend more time uh, uh, even responding to people's comments and, and any of those things. Oh, and, and it really, I, I'm already, uh, well, I could say more, I'm getting emotional now. I did have a nice good cry yesterday after seeing everybody's uh, responses and all the people who called and Amazing how many of us have the same cell phone number. I think I've had this one for almost 20 years now. So, oh, anyway, um, I'm a little scatterbrained, but I am really trying to prep myself for tomorrow. I did find out some good information from some recent people that have gone through chemo. Um, bought a bunch of stuff on Amazon, and I'll probably try to detail that for anyone else who might be going through the same kind of BS. Uh, I did find out two co-workers. Um, are also fighting cancer. Actually, a coworker is fighting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, he went to the same. I'm going to the Clearview Cancer Institute here in Huntsville, Alabama. Ooh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to leave it at that. I know it's been a little bit of a ramble, but I'm doing good, guys. Thanks again, everybody, and I'll, I'll keep everyone as formed as best I can. Thanks.